It's Diaspora Connect UG, bringing you closer to home. because uh, it shows the world what they are sponsoring, what is happening in Uganda. In many ways, it's determined in cities like LA, like Washington, like London. So what is happening in Uganda would not be happening if it was not sponsored by the international community, by the United States and by the European Union. So when we show the world what the tax payers money is doing, maybe they will decide that their tax money, uh, their taxpayers' money can do better for the people of Africa, in particular, and the people of Uganda. Thank you so much. I want them to take away two things. One, I want them to know the kind of misery, the kind of suffering that is happening in Uganda, and it is being paid for by their taxpayers' money. I want them to know that they are sponsoring it, and they can choose to avert it put better use to their money than the suffering and feeling of the people of Uganda. But I also want the world to see the resilience, the hope that is being held by the young men and women in Uganda in their millions that are struggling to change their destiny for the better. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Nice to meet you. Just one question for you, sir. How does it feel to have your story told at this point? this form. Um, it is like a victory itself for our story to be told by us for a long time. So much taxpayers' money from Uganda has been spent to paint a rosy picture about the reality of Uganda. We didn't have any other way to tell our story. So this film comes as a magical tool for us to express ourselves, to show the Ugandan story raw and unfiltered. The money that we invest 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 the money that
First lady, Solomon Tanzo Kulava, Ogambocha, Olive Lundi, Olive Cablund, Mamma, first lady, two sons of Kulava, Sanso Kulava, and you. Move here, let's get that chair. We're Uganda to travel around. We're going to travel around. We're going to get a plane. 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 We're going to get a Movie. Hey. It's a film, it's a real life wow. film. film eh? There is no fiction, no nothing. No nothing. It's real. Wow. So, the quality design. So, just leave it all. Oh, okay. Thank you so much. Christopher, you met Bobby and Barbie initially in, in Europe and started on this project a number of years ago uh, and shot an incredible number of hours the film was my understanding is that the original cut was six hours long how did you <laughs> contain it to put it as well, well we were i mean we started um filming six years ago and we had a huge amount of things like four thousand hours of footage and um, we spent two years in the cutting room and there were so many different stories we could have told and there's many people who are not in the film who deserve to be in the film but what we ended up doing is focusing on Bobby and Barbie and those close to them because we felt that through them we felt the pain of the people of Uganda best and they were best able to demonstrate the story and um, it really resonated with them so we, we ended up thinking that was the best way of doing it. Moses, how would you describe being at a, at a Bobby Wine rally? and what that is like, and we'll get a, some sense from the footage, of course, but it's got to be something extraordinary to be in the middle of that. Well, um, thank you so much, ladies and gentlemen, for coming out tonight. We really appreciate you. Um, this moment is really gratifying, and it's really the power of God that we're here today to, to celebrate this film. Um, as we're here tonight, um, there's many people uh, who have followed Bobby, people who have uh, been close to the movement, people who have died. There's people who are missing. There's people whom we don't know where they are. John Bosco Chivarama, um, and many other political prisoners who are still in jails today. Um, and it's very, um, it's an honor to be here tonight to share this story. Um, being in those political, uh, uh, spaces, I would say, um, was um, in the beginning, you know, I was very inspired by Bobby Wine and Bobby and the work they were doing. Um, and Bobby was speaking to my heart uh, in his music and through his messages. And, you know, um, I was, uh, you know, we're going up all around and it's, it's just, um, Incredible seeing the, the hope, you know, the hope, the resilience that um, um, that you know Ugandans had, and you could see it in the faces of the people, you know, them looking up and, and, and seeing how Bobby was, uh, how he had stepped up to to lead this movement that was kind of waiting, you know, and when he, when Bobby stepped up to uh, to lead, to hold that mantle. Um, uh, the Ugandans saw a leader in him, and that's why you see all these mammoth crowds, you know, following him. Yeah.
Thank you. Bobby, you were about four years old when Museveni came to power. So basically your entire life, he's been the president of the country. What is it going to take to, for change truly to come to you, God? Is it possible? Ah, now those are two questions. What is it going to take? Is it possible? It's, it's going to take a lot more than we have. But I know the first thing it will take is the hope. And I'm glad to report that the hope is there in abundance. <laughs> we might not have the rest yet, but we have the hope. So we have the, be the beginning point. Is it going to be possible? Definitely yes. Whether it's going to be possible now or tomorrow or during my lifetime, I don't know, but I know it's going to be possible. That's why we don't stop. Harvey, you. were you ever surprised at the political support that Bobby attracted seemingly right away? I mean, that, that's a, and we had seen some examples, for instance, in, in Haiti with Sweet Mickey, where he's, you know, a, a performer became president of Haiti, that Ruben Gladys, for instance, ran for president in Panama. It's still not uh, an obvious transition to go from popular music into that position, but did it surprise you at all to see him attract such broad support uh, really right away, it seems? Uh, I am a Bobby Wine fan. <laughs> and we Bobby Wine fans just go where Bobby Wine goes. <laughs> so seeing crowds of people following him was no surprise at all. What surprised me is that we were now seeing a different face and a different voice. We were seeing a child like who spoke what they had lived and who spoke from experience. And he was young and he spoke the language of the young, which is more than half the number of the population of Uganda. So having someone speak like us and speak for us was something we had waited for so long. So the numbers were available and we are blessed to have that voice. We hope that even the older people will see it. Of course, we know they have seen it, but we hope that the ones who sit in those chairs will just realize that it's time out for them and they'll leave it for the young people to take it on. Christopher and, and Moses, I'm sure one of the challenges filmmakers is that you're going to have in your mind is how do we make the story universal such that audiences around the world, and certainly in the United States, will connect with it. And I think a lot of people will connect with it as a love story, uh, in one sense, a love story between a man and his country, but of course, a love story between Bobby and Barbie, which is deeply touching. Yeah, I think that's really true. I mean, the other thing we had at our disposal um, was the music, which made a massive difference. And we tried to use the music as much as possible to tell the story um, to make it really relevant. And again, I mean, we've got the children here as well. Would they like to stand up? Why? I don't know. 
Yeah, I think the transition was as a result of growth and reality. I didn't choose it. It was just a transformation of life. And uh, maybe that's where destiny wanted me to go. Yeah. Barbie, what did you think when um, Bobby wanted to become an overtly political figure? Because, of course, in doing that, he's risking his life. Uh, just like I said in the movie, Bobby is very unpredictable. You can't know what he will be tomorrow. <laughs> so uh, I never get to think about anything when Bobby chooses to do anything. <laughs> it's never about me. It's always about the people. And I am among the people. So yes, we the people want Bobby Wayne to do what he has to do for us. And Bob, are you talking about a really important experience you had when you were about age 25? You were already a very successful pop star. You went to a club, thought you were going to have a good time. You <clears throat> showed up in a vehicle that's attracted the attention of somebody who was rather envious of you. And that, that was sort of a turning point for you. Well, like I said, it was growth. Um, initially, I was an artist, a pop star, a young ghetto guy that just made it and uh, is celebrating life. Uh, I had done my part. I was um, feeling like, you know, I had done my part. However, most of my friends, most of my relatives would never be able to live the way I was living. And uh, until that fateful day when I was beaten up in a nightclub and realized that I was not as safe as I thought I was, I decided that I would use my music to communicate and stand for those that are less privileged. And, you know, the rest is history. That's how I found out. Thousands, hundreds of thousands, millions that you saw there, the unknown, the unnamed men and women, many of them, I saw many people in that film that are not alive today. Many of them, are in their graves. Many of them are missing, they disappeared, never to be seen again. Many of them are in exile. I actually saw some of them present here today, they ran away from home. Yep, yep. Uh, very, very, very many of them are in prison up to today and their biggest crime is supporting me. Yep. So to see that I'm here, um, it's a big privilege. I would like to say they are the real heroes and we continue to represent them at every platform, everywhere we go in the world. Now, thank you. now talking about the billion dollar uh, donation that comes to Uganda, to General Museveni every year, that is part of the international aid that General Museveni receives in terms of military aid and otherwise that he instead uses to oppress and suppress the people of Uganda. It's very important for us, for the US citizens, to watch this, for the international community, the EU citizens, to watch this so that they can see um, the suffering that the people of Uganda are facing and so that they can know that they are actually paying for it. It is the American taxpayer that is sponsoring the murder, the death, and the genocide of our people. We've claimed so much, we've requested so much, and we continue to request uh, to the U.S. government, if you cannot help us, at least don't sponsor our oppressor. And to the and also to the U.S. citizens, citizens of the world, um, we request you, at least you're powerful enough to hold your leaders accountable. Please ask them to realign their priorities. We absolutely appreciate the collaboration that we have, but let that collaboration be in terms of democracy, respect for human rights, and respect for the rule of law. You can hold them accountable. <laughs> 
And then, we want to know worldwide. I, I, I advise you, we can never do a record. Guess what? We see much happening in campaign 2021. In that film, it is so real, it is so nice. Nothing was edited out, no much happening. That's how it is. People are going to cheat and see at Uganda, Cherry. Now, cheat and get the church in town. No, Rachel, that's why connectivity is bringing you close at home. Stay good because I'm bringing you Bobby Wine, the people's president. I love you so much on camera. I have Naira Ali. I love you, girl. Thank you so much. Till next time, stay good. Subscribe, like. Tivaklava film screening, yeah, the people's president. Amanya go say what? Amanya go again, this is Bakula Jewel. And you are on Bibai Hills, Kulava documentary over Mopia President Chagula. At two, we deserve us for Nabata and Kojira on the theaters. You can have it officially, this Gabi Munana July, booked out on a weekend. Nayinga, while in New York, Boston, Washington, DC. Amujeku uh, uh, Central Park. Uh, President again, I'm the premier. I'm going to be here. I'm going to be here. i I'm going to be here. i i Thank you. Mayo, to put them on film screening, go waga, go waga. I'm encouraging all the guys. Number one, but the movie is very inspiring. It puts uh, some level of perspective. We try to make it right, just to get the money from the problem around you. Be inspired. But if you have to work, man, the more they struggle, the more you know when you meet them, struggle and everything. Yeah, I should use it. So I'm encouraging everybody to more than half of the Ugandans are 35 years and below. But the generation is here, so you take care of it, you have to 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 take care of it. Yes, what do you mean? I don't know. What do you mean? What do you mean? What do you mean? Amanya kutu kutu gambie. Amanya kaize mai nanyo ndo na mako kilo nyako nga mba kalewe. Hey, kalewe? Kalewe. Munu kwa kola ngani? You're watching the Aspro Connect UG. The views expressed on this program or commentary are solely of the individuals providing them and do not represent or reflect the official policy or position of this YouTube channel or its management. You've been watching the Aspro Connect UG, bringing you closer to home.